Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today I am setting up a reading journal for the year of 2024. I'm gonna be using two Pigma Microns in Sapia 01 and 05. I'll also be using several Tombow dual brush pens. I have those listed on screen and I'll also link them or list them in the description box below. One Calliograph pen from Archer and Olive as well. I pulled out this espresso ink from Close to My Heart, but I ended up only using that for one page and I switch it out for Warm Buff by Pink Fresh Studio. And I also pulled out several washi tapes. I only end up using the darker red one that is from the washi tape shop um, and I don't use the other two that I have shown here. I am using an Archer and Olive A5 dot grid notebook. I am an Archer and Olive affiliate, so if you are interested in getting a little bit of a discount and help supporting my channel, please use my code or links in the description box below as well. This is from the fall release of 2023, and I had actually posted this in my stories on Instagram with another notebook, and I asked all of my Instagram followers to help me out and choose which one to use, and y'all chose this one. I'm super excited because I love it, and I can't wait to get into it. The first page that I'm going to work on is my bookshelf and I'm actually taking inspiration from Mandy Journals over on Instagram. I just put a little picture of her, I think it was her 2022 bookshelf on screen and I saw this several months ago and was absolutely obsessed with it and immediately followed her on Instagram solely because of this one page in her reading journal. And I'll tell you what, I forgot who I saw this page off of and could not find another picture or anything on Google to kind of get the idea of how I originally wanted it to look. Because when I saw her post earlier in this year, I was like, oh, I should do that for my 2024 reading journal. And then I could not find it again. Thankfully, uh, like about a week ago, I saw the post again randomly. I think I was searching 2024 reading journals on Instagram or something like that and found it again. And I was super excited. So I made sure to take a screenshot so I could let y'all know where I got that inspiration from. I did make a few changes uh, to what her original 2024 bookshelf looked like. So I'm putting a large arched window in the center of my two pages. And then I've got narrow shelves on either side of that window and then one short shelf at the bottom and then one full shelf that goes across or spans across both pages um, which is the only shelf that's that big. I penciled everything out first right um, because I really wanted to make sure I had at least 80 books here and I believe I ended up with more than 80 books which is perfectly fine but I wanted to make sure I had at least 80 books because that is how many book boxes I'm going to put in my Goodreads tracker on the next page. So I wanted to make sure that if I met that goal or if I read that many books next year that I had enough books on this page to fill out. A couple of things that I won't do on this particular page, I'm not going to do anything with the window in this video. I actually still have not decided if I want to do like a night scene or just like some green, like I'm looking out at like a forest or something in the window. I have absolutely no idea what I wanna do. So I just kind of left that blank for right now. I am adding string lights to each of the top corners of my page and I'm just using a circle stencil um, to kind of make like circle bulbs. I will color those in a little bit later using a zig color dot marker and then I'm going to put a dot of a Posca paint pen in white just to give it a little bit of a highlight and I really love the way that that ended up looking. I will also draw my first attempt ever at drawing a hanging plant. I'm sure this could be better but I ended up really liking the way that it turned out. And I will color that in with my Tombow dual brush pens as well. Another thing that I'm not going to end up doing on this page is filling in the bottom 
right hand corner, I'm going to leave that area pretty blank. For 2022 and 2023, I did color in each of my books based on the format in which I read them. And I'm just not sure if I want to do that again this year. I have no idea if I'm going to color in the books, if I'm going to color them in in any specific way, like based on rating or genre or anything like that. I feel like in most cases, I just end up coloring everything in the exact same color, which I don't really think I want to do with this particular spread. I'm not sure. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you keep a bookshelf page in your reading journal, do you color your books in? And if so, what format do you use to color them in? Do you color them in by month, genre, star rating, anything like that? I feel like I just end up using the same color most of the time because I'm either only reading digital books or only rating everything a three or only reading romance. So everything just ends up being roughly the same color. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below and maybe you can help me come up with a plan or an idea for how I can color these books in for 2024. I wanted to make sure that I drew out this hanging plant before I finished the frame of the window because I had part of this plant kind of hanging over the window and I wanted the window to rest behind the plant so I drew out all of the leaves and vines and stuff in before I actually finished the window but now that I've got that done I'm going to go ahead and get that finished up and then I think I'm going to pull out some of my markers and start getting everything colored in so I'm going to be coloring in my leaves in the green color which I had listed on screen earlier. I don't remember it off of the top of my head, but it was listed on screen and I'll have it listed in the description box below for you as well. One thing that I do on this page, and you'll see it right when I flip to the next page, is I'm going to use a really light brown color. I think it was 992 if I'm remembering correctly. I'm gonna use that to color in all of my shelves for my books. I'll use 992 and then draw lines with mocha and I end up really, really disliking it. Watching it back on the video, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look as bad as I felt like it looked in person, but once I finished coloring everything in, I just, it didn't, it didn't satisfy me. So I'll end up when I flip to the next page and um, start coloring in shelves on that page or thinking about it, I'm actually going to switch it to a new marker, which I also listed at the beginning of the video as well. I'm gonna basically just switch the whole color. <laughs> uh, here is where I'm coloring in those circles with the zig dot marker and then adding that highlight with my Posca paint pen. And then I think I'm gonna start sketching in all of these books. And I'll fast forward myself, I think. I think I'm doing this at like 800 speed, <laughs> uh, getting all of these books sketched in. I ended up having a total of four hours of footage for this setup, and it took me three separate days uh, between batteries dying, um, batteries dying, uh, my filming cutting off, and just me being tired of drawing <laughs> and sketching all this stuff out. It took me three days and four hours between those three days to get this whole thing set up. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think I'm done. Um, I ended up doing this bookshelf page, a Goodreads goal page, a monthly totals page, then I did recommended books and do, did not finish books. I will do a daily reading challenge page and a series tracker page. So there is a couple of new ones that I hadn't set up on camera in previous years. So which is the daily reading challenge and the series tracker page. Those are new to my actual initial setup. I did add a daily reading challenge page for 2023 but I did that off 
camera. So last year I just left several pages empty at the beginning of my setup in case I wanted to add anything in in the middle of the year and I did end up adding things in. So I, I think I wanna do a trope bingo. I think that would be really fun, but I don't have that added in this particular setup. So let me know down in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing kind of like a part two of this video if I do end up adding additional setup pages or beginning pages to this reading journal. Um, if you let me know down in the comments, I'll make sure to uh, record that. Otherwise, I'll probably just do it whenever <laughs> and then just kind of have it in my journal. Um, so I'm going to finish getting these colored in and then I will pull out some washi tape and I'm going to washi tape off my actual shelf. So I'll put a piece of washi tape across the top and across the bottom so that I can just lay my Tombow down and just swipe it across there and my line will come out perfect for every single shelf. I saw this from Jess, uh, Joshi Corin, um, from her YouTube channel and I loved the idea and since I wanted this since I'm using the ruler for my setup mainly this month, I wanted the lines for my for my pen or for my Tombow to be really, really straight. So I did go ahead and use that tip from her to get these super straight shelves for my setup. And you'll see these shelves seem really light. And after I finished going through this entire process, is when I was kind of like, I don't think I like this <laughs> and I'll end up changing it. Um, I won't change it on camera. So I will change it going forward after I move on to the next page and decide that I do want to go with a darker colored brown for my shelves. And then I think my battery died and I was like, well, while my battery's dead, I'll just go ahead and redo all of the shelves on the first page so that y'all didn't have to watch that again. And then I just have this last shelf here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up. And then I will pull out the Iris Alpha from Carrie Bradford Studios. And I'm going to use that to stamp 2024 books on the bottom left-hand corner of my page in that alpha. And that's going to be the alpha that I'm using in all of my headings. So I did like a super, super quick flip through at the beginning of the video. So you kind of saw what all we'll be doing in this video. So I have that same alpha as what I'll, I will be using for the rest of my titles for all of the pages that I'll be doing in today's setup. The ink that I have here that I'll be using to do my stamping for this first page is the espresso ink from Close to My Heart. And I didn't realize that this has like a foam pad on it instead of a felt pad. And I just really, I don't like using super squishy foam pads and it is quite squishy. So that's why I end up looking for a different brown before I continue my stamping on other pages because I don't like how squishy this foam pad is. So I will end up pulling out a different brown ink, which is going to end up being Warm Buff by Pink Fresh Studio because that has a felt pad and use that moving forward. I think the colors end up being fairly close anyways. Um, it'll just be a more pleasant experience for myself while I'm doing so much stamping throughout this video that I'm not having to use the foam pad. And I, I remember when I pulled this ink out, I was like, I feel like I never use this. Why don't I use this ink? And then I stuck my my first two in there and I was like, oh, this is why. This is, this is a foam pad. I don't like this. <laughs> So we are now moving on for, for the most of my video. I'm just going to use that ink pad to set under the cover of my book to kind of keep everything level. And that's that's all it's used for going forward. I had taken out a piece of paper here um, to test out a new marker. I even sketched out the same coloring that I did on the shelves initially and then colored over it with that dark brown marker to make sure that it wouldn't be like too dark since I would be coloring over it with the darker marker and it's fine. So I'm gonna end up using 
that darker marker going forward. So one of the ways that I decided to try and bring that main bookshelf page um, theme into the rest of my pages this for this setup is by adding a shelf underneath my titles. So I'm just drawing a large line underneath each of my titles in each section and I will color those kind of shelves in the exact same way that I colored in that very first bookshelf page. So for these two pages here, what I'm working on is the first page is going to be my Goodreads goal tracker because I do set up a Goodreads goal. And I have that linked below if you're interested in following me or becoming friends on Goodreads. Feel free, I always have that linked in the description under, under socials, I think. If you're interested in what I'm reading, sometimes I leave reviews on books, sometimes I don't, but I usually always give them at least a rating. <laughs> Um, so that's going to be my Goodreads goal tracker. My goal for 2024, I think I'm going to leave at 75 books just because I didn't meet that goal yet this year. It is December 20th. So I still have, I still have some time. Um, but as of right now, I've not yet met that goal. So I'm going to keep my goal for 2024 as 75, but I have 80 books here on my page. Uh, that way if I read over 75 books, I have some additional spaces that I can fill in. The page on the right hand side is going to be my monthly totals page. So I've drawn a chart of sorts and I've listed out all of the months using a stamp set from Studio Calico. And I just stamped out each of the months and on this chart, I'm just going to track how many books I read each month, how many pages total I read each month, and how many different genres I read that month. Because like I said a little bit ago, I mostly just read romance books. Um, romance and fantasy are like the main books that I read. And I, I have, this year at, at least, I have kind of gone outside of that comfort zone a little bit and read some memoirs and listen to some poetry books and stuff like that. I'm hoping to continue getting a little bit out of my comfort zone in 2024 as well. But primarily, I am really usually just reading romance and <laughs> fantasy books. Um, so I wanted to kind of keep that in my monthly tracker just to see how many different genres I did end up reading for each month of the year. And then I have a little total section underneath all of the months. Since I don't have like a word stamp for totals or the section headers that I used, I'm just going to use one of the Pigma Microns and just write in a very small all caps font or handwriting, I guess, um, each of the remaining titles that I will need in order to get this page finished up. The last thing that I will do on this page is get my shelves done. I'm also gonna add a little bit of a dotted line above where my total counts will go and add a dotted line around where 75 will go in my Goodreads goal tracker. For my Goodreads goal tracker, I'm not actually going to fill in any numbers at this point. I wanna use a stamp set to do that, but I'm not sure what stamp set I wanna use. And I know it's just gonna be a tedious process, so I'm not going to film that portion of it. There's also going to be another part of this video where I have a list of numbers that I'm not going to do during the video, just because it will be so tedious. Also, the stamp set that I'm thinking I wanna use is literally so tiny that I have to have my face like two inches away from it to see. And I know y'all don't wanna just look at the back of my head for the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna do those ones off camera. For my next two pages here, I am going to have a page for upcoming releases and an A to Z challenge, which I completely did not even list when I was just listing through the pages that I did in when I was on the bookshelf page. So I really liked having an upcoming releases page for my 2023 
reading journal and I wanted to make sure to include that again. I do keep the boxes here pretty small and I'm also adding a small line, kind of one dot grid wide of space in order for me to either write the date or check off that I read the book once it's released. Um, I'm not sure which one of those I will do yet, but I noticed that for 2023, I wasn't leaving myself enough space to either write the date that the book was releasing or enough space to check it off. I probably should have left myself two dot grid spaces worth of space before, but you know, here we are. For my A to Z challenge, I am so, so close to finishing this challenge for 2023. I did not finish it in 2022 and I was a little bit bummed, but also like some of these books are kind of hard to find, <laughs> especially le letters like Z and U, and well, maybe not U, but like some of these letters are very difficult to find. I am reading two books right now, um, one that starts with a Q and one that starts with an E and those are the last two books that I have to finish to complete the A to Z challenge for 2023. So cross your fingers for me that I actually finish them for this year because I will be so stinking proud of myself if I meet and finish the A to Z challenge. So I'm going to do that again next year, but I think I'm going to give myself a rule that I cannot read the same book next year that I read this year. So as an example, I read a book called Zeus for Z in 2023. If I can't find another book that starts with a Z that looks interesting to me, like I'm not gonna let myself reread Zeus just to mark that off, if that makes sense. So I will have to find another book and maybe read something outside of my comfort zone in order to satisfy that letter. So that's my, that's my thinking and my plan in that Anytime I am struggling to find a letter that I just have to find one. I'm using, like I said, the same alpha to do my titles. Um, and then I believe I am going to go grab my N89 marker because I didn't have it in front of me at this point, but I'm gonna go grab it and I'm going to highlight that singular row that I left at the beginning of each of my monthly upcoming releases spaces. And then I'm also going to highlight every letter for the A to Z challenge as well. This page, I will also add in just some additional books, similar to how I drew them on my cover, not my cover page, similar to how I drew them on my bookshelf page. I'm going to use up some of the excess space that I have. I think I put maybe one or two after upcoming releases. And then I also add some at that big empty space for the A to Z challenge as well. And I will sprinkle some of these books throughout this setup as well so that I have those same type of book drawings or book doodles and the shelf to kind of tie the whole beginning setup pages all together so that they're kind of cohesive and match well together. One thing that I'm going to end up doing with almost all of my titles throughout this setup is alternating the capital and lowercase letters. So this Iris Alpha has both lowercase letters and capital letters in this like handwritten type font. And some of the lowercase letters I like more than the capital letters and some of the capital letters I like more than the lowercase letters. So I'm going to just kind of use whichever ones that I like. So I don't think I use the capital E as an example almost at all, maybe like once or twice I'll use it in this setup, but for the most part, I like to stick with the lowercase e, but I really like the capital A and I'll use that a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna mix them up back and forth. This upcoming releases is <laughs> a little bit wonky because I think this was one of the first ones that I really mixed them up throughout the words. Um, but as I continue on, um, it'll get a little bit more seamless looking. I also pulled out like a random piece of tape because I wanted to draw a bookend 
next to the books underneath my A to Z challenge. And I thought that the tape roll had a nice shape to it. So I just kind of stuck that next to my book and traced over it to create that book end. And I colored that in the same color that I'm making my shelves so that it kind of brings that color a little bit more into the page as well. Then I think the last thing that I will do on these two pages is just get my shelves colored in and then we will move on to the next page. So as I started doing these ones, I ended up just using that Tombow marker and then pulling back out my Pigma Micron and the 05 and using that as like the fine lines of the shelf and this is how I will maintain doing these shelves throughout the rest of the spread. I'm just going to use that dark brown marker, go over some of the spaces a couple of times and then go over that again with some finer lines with my Pigma Micron. I also drew like a little like file bin or something like that on top of that top shelf as well. I don't even know what those things are called but they're so cute. The next two pages I will be working on are going to be my recommended page and my did not finish page. So for the recommended, I have a space for the title and then also a source column. So as an example, I think most of the books that I have in my recommended column or page for 2023 um, are all recommendations that I got from watching Larry on YouTube because the books that she reads almost always end up being books that I love. Like I don't think I've ever read a book that she recommended that I didn't like. So I do follow a lot of recommendations from her. That way um, I like having a source in this section because if I really like a book that someone recommends me, whether it's a, a person or somebody I see on Instagram or somebody on YouTube, if I really like that book, I know that I can go back to their channel, their Instagram, or them in person if I know them in person and ask for further recommendations if I'm just kind of stuck and need something to read. I pulled out a monthly calendar because I do not know how to spell the word recommended. I had it written out on the page, so I copied what I'd wrote out on my page over to this piece of paper here so that I didn't end up stamping it incorrectly. I don't know why, but if I think too hard about that word, I always butcher it. Like if I don't think about it, if I'm just writing it in everyday life, it's perfectly fine. But when I'm stamping it out, I always mess it up because I think too, too much about if I'm going to mess it up or not. This particular two pages is going to be the first pages that I actually pull out this washi tape from the washi tape shop. This is actually part of a book collection. I don't know if it's still available, but I purchased this on Amazon. So if it is, I will link it below for you. I loved the book collection washi tape and I had not yet used this like deep red, reddish brown color, I guess. Um, and I thought it really fit my setup like super well. This whole setup actually ended up being quite dark. As I was going back through and flipping back through my pages, I was like, wow, this is a lot darker than I was planning to go. But I really love the way that the, that the whole thing turned out. So I'm going to go back to some of my other pages and add this washi tape to some of my previous pages as well. I do this a lot in my setups. And like, I think almost every single setup that I do, I always end up about halfway through deciding that I also want to add something else, but I feel like I can't just add that something else to one page. So I always end up adding whatever I want to add to the page that I was working on. And then I have to flip back through my pages and see if I can find other places to add the same thing. <laughs> and I added this, I think on... I think on all pages. I think I added some a little bit of this washi tape to all of the pages. I only kept a couple of them in the video. Otherwise, you know, we'd be watching like a two hour long video. And here's where I came back and highlighted every other row. I came onto this page and added the washi tape and then I had my marker and I was like, oh yeah, I should highlight every other row of my A to Z challenge. So that's where I'm doing this as well. And then I will flip back over to the page that I was actually working on <laughs> to finish that one. I get a little sidetracked sometimes when I'm doing these setups. I, I don't know. 
it's probably just like the ADHD in me or something like that. I get very distracted sometimes. So now I'm back to the actual pages that we were working on, the recommended and did not finish pages. And I'm just going to finish up my shelves for these two particular pages. And then we will move on again. Moving right along, I am now going to be working on my backlogs page. This is also another page that I did not mention when I was listing out the pages that I did in the bookshelf page. Apparently I have a very short term memory today and completely forgot all of these pages that I set up. So for my backlog page, I did this in my 2020, 2023 journal as well, but I wanted this to be a little bit different. Um, I didn't leave myself a space that I liked to actually check off if I read a book or not. So how I'm going to do this particular setup is I'm going to draw too many lines because I decided to, like I said earlier, use a ruler for my setup this time. And it just, it adds a lot of time, I think, using a ruler to make sure that you're drawing straight lines, but that's neither here nor there. I am drawing a rectangle space for each backlog item that I have. So you'll see here I've got a ton of lines that I'm drawing and in each rectangle I'm going to split that into three spaces. So the first two dot grid spaces that I'm marking off right now are going to be for me to check off if I've read that book and then I'm marking over I believe it was six spaces from the right hand side and that is going to be for me to write what type of backlog item this is so if it's a physical backlog book i'll write physical here if it's an audio backlog book like an audiobook that i've downloaded that i haven't listened to yet i will list audio there or just digital if i purchase a ebook and have not yet read it I usually give myself a little bit of time, I think a couple of weeks after I buy a book before I add it to the backlog list because sometimes when I'm buying a book, especially if it's a new release, I read it right away. Though for 2024, I think I'm really going to try and focus on reading through most of my physical backlog. So I'm hoping I will get a lot of these books read and kind of done because I think I also need to do a book declutter and I can't declutter books that I haven't read yet because I don't know if I love them and I don't know if I'll want to keep them. So I know for 2024, just completely off topic, I'm going to be doing so much decluttering in my house. So I wanna, like I said, make sure I'm reading through my physical books. That way if I don't like the book, I can get rid of it and donate it to someplace that can use it or somebody that will like it. I recently found a bookstore about 30 minutes away from where I live and I asked them while we were there if they accepted used books and they said yes. So I already have a place where I know I can take any books that I'm no longer going to be wanting after I read them and decide that I might not like them. So that's going to be a plan for me in 2024 and I'm very excited at the idea of A, decluttering and B, donating books to a small local business to kind of help them as well. So I've got most of this done and the last thing I'm going to add to this particular page is just going to be some washi tape to the very bottom. I accidentally cut this washi tape just a little bit too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it down anyways and then I will just at the very end cut another little tiny piece of washi tape to fill in that blank space over on the right hand side. I want this washi tape that I'm adding now to kind of go across the whole spread. So I basically just ripped it in half and added half to each side of the bottom and ripped it at an angle so that it's going like down at an angle. I added that next piece of washi tape just to fill in that blank space. 
and then I think I am done with this page and we will move on to my daily reading challenge. This particular spread is actually one that I got from Heba from my little journal. I really, really love the way that this spread looks filled in. Like it is gorgeous. When I, when I do my 2023 flip through of my reading journal, I will obviously show you how this is looking for me right now, but it's another one that has a lot of lines, y'all. <laughs> so I am making 12 columns and then lining every single line for each column. This is also another page where I am going to be adding the numbers 1 through 31 for the days of each month or potential days of each month since not all days have 31 months. And I'm going to add them to the very left hand side and the very right hand side of the page. Um, that way I can reference it on both sides and make it easier for me to figure out which day I'm on. And last year what I did was I just picked two colors and alternated each column for each color. If I read that day, I just did a little kind of highlight in that column. And if I didn't read, I just added a bunch of lines to the column. Like I said, I will share this in my 2023 flip through as well so that you can see how it looks finished, but I love it. So like I said, I got this particular spread idea from Heba from my little journal. So definitely go check her out. I think she just set up her reading journal for 2024 recently. So she's got a video up for that as well. I'm going to use that same Studio Calico stamp set to stamp out all of the months above each column that pertains to that month. And then I will kind of just do some of the same standard things that I've been doing in all of my pages so far. So I'll do my shelves and also my actual header. So I end up the 2024 the, I'm sorry, the daily reading challenge. So I do daily reading challenge as my title actually takes up almost this whole top layer that I left for my title space. I think I end up with just a very little bit at the very end and that I'm just going to doodle in some books in that spot to fill in that space. As I'm getting this very, very long title stamped out, I would love to know if you've made it this far in the video, what are your plans uh, regarding your reading for 2024? Do you have a reading journal? Are you setting one up? Is it gonna be your first year using a reading journal if you've never had one before? Or is it, are you just gonna read to read and not track it at all? Uh, I would love to know. Um, I'm always curious because nobody I know in real life keeps a reading journal. Only people that I know online keep reading journals. And anytime I mention it to somebody that I have one, they're always like, oh, what? And I have to kind of go through and explain the whole thing. And if I have it with me, I'll usually like pull it out and show them. So I'm very curious to know, like, what are your plans for 2024 regarding reading? Or are you not a reader at all? And you just like to watch my videos because I talk a lot and usually make a fool out of myself while I'm talking. <laughs> it's fine. I'm okay with it. Um, yeah. So let me know down in the comments below if you have any reading plans this year, or um, if you don't have any reading plans, but you do like reading, what is your favorite genre? I know I said earlier in the video that I am mostly a romance reader slash a little bit of fantasy sometimes. So I'd love to know from you, uh, if you have a favorite genre, what is it? So the last, well, it's not the last thing that I'll be doing, but I'm now working on just getting a little bit of washi tape added to the bottom of my daily reading challenge page. I will also, since I flipped back to my backlogs to kind of trim off that washi tape, I'm going to add a few doodled books to this shelf and then I'll flip back to my daily reading challenge page and also add some books laying flat down on this page as well. The next thing that I'm going to do is work on a series tracker uh, spread. I have not used this. I didn't use one in my 2022 setup and I didn't have one for 2023 either. But I found myself, especially this year, starting a lot of series 
that are they're like standalone but part of a series type books um which there are a ton of like in the romance genre as it is but I wanted to have a spot that if I really liked one of the books that I'm reading, I can kind of add that whole series to these two pages so that I can remember to come back and pull more of those books and read more of those books if I really liked them. Now for this particular spread, I have absolutely no idea how I will actually be tracking um, those particular series or how I'm gonna lay everything out. I don't have any ideas of what I actually need to add here yet at all either. I need to kind of go through what I read in 2023 and see if there's anything that was part of a like like a series or a collection or anything that I wanted to read more books from and then that way I can kind of add everything then at that point but this is definitely a spread that's going to be really figured out off camera probably probably midway through February if I'm being honest like it's probably not going to happen until I read a book that's part of a series or a collection and then I decide that I want to add this to a series tracker so I've got the pages here which was the point of me adding them to my beginning pages that way I have something to come back to in a space already designated for those series or collections so this page is going to end up being fairly simple I just have my two shelves that's going to go underneath my my title and then I will also like I already have also stamped out my title and then I'm just going to add a couple pieces of washi tape to this spread as well. Once I get these pieces of washi tape added, I believe I add a couple of doodled books up towards the top of my title as well. And then I, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with my setup after I get this finished. But I would love to know if there were to be maybe a part two setup video or something like that where I might be adding in additional pages. One that comes to my mind particularly is going to be that bingo page that I mentioned earlier because the more I think about it, the more I really do want to do a romance trope bingo, bingo board on here because I think that I would actually, I think I could get a blackout bingo on that one so I really want to add that in there and I'm sure that there's going to be more spreads throughout the rest of the year that I will see that I'll want to add so let me know down in the comments please if that's something that you want to see because I would love to record that for you if you want to see it um let's see so here I'm just kind of getting my last little bits of doodles added and then I will go ahead and go into a final flip through of all of my completed pages for this setup. I feel like I have so, so many and I'm still over here contemplating adding more. Oh goodness. But that's all. This is all I have for you for today. If you made it to the end of this video, let me know what your favorite book was for 2023 in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.